Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. It's Caleb Jones, the Sovereign CEO. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The first Sovereign CEO live stream slash podcast of the beautiful new year 2024. What will hopefully be the greatest year of my life. We'll see. And actively working on this very big project. I've talked about that in past podcasts and past videos. This is Sovereign CEO, location independent income. Getting your income location dependent so you can be free from your nine to five job free from your collapsing Western country, being internationally mobile, being long-term happy and free and stable from what is coming. Uh, as usual, I will just uh, kind of hang out and just shoot the shit until we get to today's topics. Um, a number of you have already put stuff in the chat. We're live on um, YouTube, Facebook, and I think uh, LinkedIn. Um, as per always, I do not answer any dating questions on this live stream. This is Sovereign CEO. If you want dating questions, go to the Alpha Male 2.0 live stream slash podcast, which we'll have on Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> I am in the middle of watching a movie. I don't watch movies like two. I don't sit and watch movies for two hours. I don't have that kind of time. So I watch in like little 15, 20 minute segments. And I started a movie <clears throat> that I want to watch for a long time. I've seen called Battle Royale. So either you have no idea what that movie is or you know exactly what that movie is. It is a movie from about 20 years ago. It's a Japanese movie. They take a bunch of 14-year-olds and put them on an island and they all kill each other. It's great. <laughs> it's what Hunger Games should have been. <laughs> Sometimes other countries have the balls to show things in, in movies that uh, we Americans or we Westerners don't. So um, I'm about 40% into it. And um, I'm liking it. It's fantastic. A, it's non-Western. B, it's 20 years ago when money's when you know movies were kind of still kind of good. It's great. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Any questions not about dating? I'm in business but not making much money yet. Is it wise to set up a business structure in Washington or similar business-friendly state before internationalizing with the UAE? It depends on how long. If you're going to be a few years, then yes, you might as well. If it's just going to be, if you're going to be out of the country in six months, it's not worth it. So yeah. I think you downplayed the income requirement because you didn't mention some of the flags require a written letter from your employer. What? Don't think your job will be happy to know you're leaving. I have no idea to what you're referring. No idea. Uh, let's see. What else here? What's your very big project? My very big project, as I mentioned before, the one I was referring to earlier is I'm going to make 2024 literally the best year of my entire life, which will be hard because since 2007, I have had almost nothing but fantastically amazing years. So this is a very high bar for me. So we'll see if I can pull this off. I want 2024 the best year of my entire life. Overall, my business, fitness, health, personal life, everything, my goals, my mission. Last year was not a great year for me. The first half was okay. The second half was not that great. And I'm not used to years that are not that great. So to make up for last year, this year, and I have all the infrastructure in place now to make 2024 the best year of my life. I've done several podcasts and videos in the last few months about how I am trying to simplify my life and scale my income at the same time, which is really hard. Usually when you're scaling your income, you're making things more complex. I'm trying to simplify while scaling. Very difficult. One of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life. But I'm going to do it. <clears throat> Caleb, I think paradoxically you might end up succeeding on YouTube with live streams. No, I will not. I think you've already, I think you said you're already demonetized, though. Correct. I demonetized. I, my channel is not demonetized, but I, do, I don't monetize my videos. When these go up from StreamYard, I don't know if they're monetized or not. Maybe they are, but I don't care. I'm not going to. What is the best Philippine city to live in? I don't know. Don't know, don't know, don't know. I have not spent a lot of time in the Philippines. You're going to have to ask other people in the chat or the comments, and they will let you know. There's, there's various opinions on that. Random question. I live in Dubai. Where are the best places for a nice walk in Dubai? There's, there's tons of them. The, the best places are anywhere near, anywhere near water. So there's several places over by the creek. There's several places in Business Bay. There's several pieces of the marina. There's several places over on the beach. Anywhere by water. There's a whole bunch of them. How to overcome imposter syndrome. I feel stuck in the marketing aspect of my coaching business. Have you achieved results for anyone ever in your entire life, including you? 
the answer is yes, you're not an imposter. Simple, 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 simple. How far in the future are your affirmations you review every morning? My affirmations that I currently have and that I review, um, oh, you're talking about my, so I have different affirmations. The ones that I say, it varies per affirmation. I have an affirmations audio that I, that I customize for myself that I play on my phone as soon as I wake up every morning. And those are stated in the present tense. So. Will you be going into detail about how you're making this year the very best year? I already have. I've given you, go back through several videos and several podcasts. I've talked about it and I can, I will go into more detail. Yes, I already have. I've given a lot of detail about this. Uh, how are we doing on time here? Should we start with a topic? Oh, we'll wait a few more minutes. Let's see here. Let me have a drink. Hang on. Oh, I'm running out of water. Should I get more water? Hang on. Time to refill Caleb's water. Just doing a session for the 90 day business builder. And, uh, before that did someone else's podcast. So I've been talking a lot today. <clears throat> I'm 31 and still have troubles writing a mission. No issues for medium term goals, but forming the mission is very hard for me. Any tips? Too general a question. Um, you got to go through the mission exercise, which I assume you already did. Do it again in the Unchained Man. <clears throat> By the way, I will be updating those of you who purchased the new version of Unchained Man. It's not ready yet. I will do an official update this week both at YouTube and on the mailing list. Silicon Oasis is your top free zone because you can determine your industry after say of the corporation. However, they state that license, that service license allows the entity to carry out specific services only. There's not, that's not the only free zone that allows that. <clears throat> Mexico requires a letter from your employer confirming pay stub to work capability if you want to use W2 Irvine to qualify for temporary residency. That is incorrect, or you're doing something odd, or you're applying for a different type of residency that we recommend. So we know if you get residency to us, you do not require anything from your employer. You have to show proof of income. <clears throat> you don't need anything. Well, you can show your check account statements. You can show a lot of things. So either what you're doing does not apply to what we do, or I, I don't know. I've seen online that J J Japan has been going downhill recently. Japan is going downhill, has been going downhill for a long time. Well, it's been stagnating because of their demographic problem, but they won't collapse. How is the Godzilla mode one? It's not mode one, it's minus one. It's minus one. Godzilla, no, Godzilla, minus one. You gotta say it with a Japanese accent. It was very good. I saw it in the US with my family. It's very, 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 very good. Great, no, but very good. It's great. It was very good, it wasn't great. Other countries can still make good movies, just America can't. For those guys you've done webinars with recently, Igor, Jason, and Simon, can any of their business activities be used to get residency in another country, i.e. a business visa? That's not relevant to what you do. If you can show that you're conducting business activity through a business LLC, in most countries you get a business visa. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Bitcoin 2020 price prediction. Uh, no, cannot give you that. More than 42000 It's going to go up from here. I bought it last. My last buy-in was at 20000 So I've more than doubled my money again. So it's going to be more than that. Is Columbia still one of your flags? Yes. Smoked my brother, who was 23 years old, and it was uncanny how the stuff he was saying fit into your description of people that age, i.e. haters, societal programming, one-itis, et cetera. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, men under 23 are pretty hopeless. You got to wait till you hit 24. And then maybe, maybe you have a chance, Maybe. <clears throat> what does the yearly cost of the trade license after your client set up in Dubai Corp with you? Um, the trade license renewal is expensive in Dubai. It's about, it's going to run you about, mm, I think the number right now is about $4,000 US per year. If you pay three, four, five years in advance, like I do, they give you a big discount. And again, you're like, well, that's a lot of money. Wait a minute. If you save more than $4,000 a year in taxes, then you should do it. I would do it if it was quadruple that. The amount of money I save in taxes, I would pay it if it was $20,000 a year. I'd still make money, so I don't care. <clears throat> That's why if you're starting a brand new business from scratch and you're coming in from Dubai, it's probably not probably not worth it, unless you're going to bring an immediate business, things like that. Would licensing a solution be very narrow? Would licensing a solution to a very narrow B2B niche solving a very specific problem like a PDF type doc would be a great business idea? I don't know what your problem is. If it was very narrow, yes. 
What are your courses that teach you step-by-step how to start your business 2.0? The 90-day business builder, baby. Matter of fact, um, let's get the topic right now. And then I'll talk about that because we have, we have a flash sale going on for a 90-day business builder that expires tonight. Tonight. You get $400 off that 90-day business builder if you sign up. This is the beginning of the new year. I wanted to come up with a new with your bang. So if you sign up for 90-day business builder tonight, you schedule your call tonight by tonight at midnight EST, $400 off. And I, and I did that for, what did I do that for? Black Friday. So I'm not doing this again for a while. No more sales of 90 business for a while. If you want to, and you can sign up for 90 business builder now and you can start later. We start the next curriculum this Saturday, which is Jan 13th. You can sign up, get your payment in, and then you can start in February or March if you want. You don't have to start if you're not ready, but you want to take advantage of that discount. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay. Let's get to the topic, shall we? Let me zoom up my, my notes because I can't see shit. I'm constantly, you know, put my Scrooge McDuck glasses on. Constantly taking my glasses on, pulling them off, and, you know, that's why I have these. I look really old. Even though Pink Firefly thinks these are hot, I don't get it. It's like, you look hot. I I do with the glasses on? Okay, you're weird. You're weird, sweetheart. Um, Hopefully I don't need these. That's why I had to zoom up on my fonts and all my screens. That happens when you get old. Um, Where are my notes? Hang on a minute. Yeah, okay. Um, First of all, I have a reminder in here. I have a question for you guys. If any of you know the answer to this, help me out and put the answer in the chat or in the comments if you watch the recording of this video. I have two questions for you because I'm sure some of you have the answer. I have my answers, but I think you guys have better answers to this. What is the best way for a non-American to get an American phone number the cheapest way, not the best way? The cheapest way for a non-American to get an American phone number where if they call the United States and they have any sort of caller ID, it brings up the American number, not some weird-ass funky number, even though it's an American phone number, an outgoing American phone number. So in other words, if someone's in Mongolia, how do they get an American phone number where they call an American company or an American cell phone and an American phone number comes up on that phone? What's the cheapest way to do that? Google voice. I don't think Google voice works guys. I don't phone number app more specific. Give me a specific website or app. I don't think Google voice pulls that off and, or I think it's not available to people outside the certain jurisdictions of the U S. So besides Google voice, I don't think, I think we've had, we've had clients that are programs where they need American phone numbers and they call and it's just, it's a nightmare. Can't get that shit abroad. Right. Voice over IP. That's not an answer. Specific, give me a specific app or a specific website. I know VOIP. Thank you. Duh. Yes. <clears throat> you use it all the time. Use what all the time? Google Voice. I know you use it. Are you an American? I know you use it. Imagine someone sitting in, you know, fucking Mongo- a Mongolian who's never left Mongolia. They're in Mongolia. Will Google Voice allow a Mongolian to set up? I don't know. If they, I'll check it. I don't think that's correct, correct though. <clears throat> WhatsApp. No, you can't get a phone number from WhatsApp. So you guys are, all right. Well, so far, I don't like these answers. Check my app, S-U-D-O, several plans. My app, Sudo, several plans get nine phone numbers for as low as $100 a year. And again, this is important because I've had this problem. So last year I was in Mexico. I made a phone call to a company in the United States and I didn't want them to know I was in Mexico. I wanted them to think I'm in the U.S., Okay. I don't lie. Had they asked me, I would have told them I was in Mexico, but I'm not going to volunteer. But I wanted them to think it was U.S. So I called them up. So I used my American SIM card, American phone in Mexico, called the American phone number. Okay. It routed through some kind of Mexican system. So I called the company. Hey, Caleb, how you doing? Hey, Joe, how you doing? And the immediately guy says, oh, so you're in Mexico? Fuck. So he saw on the thing that came up that I was in Mexico, even though I was calling from an American phone number. This is what's important. I want them, you know, I want a phone number system that is inexpensive, that is an American outgoing, Amer- not incoming, outgoing only, outgoing. So people can make cold calls to American companies or UK companies or whatever, and an American phone number comes up and it's not super expensive. All right, cool. Phoner, 
So sudo and phoner. All right. <clears throat> Use Google Voice with a VPN spoofing your location in the USA. Okay, maybe I, I want something that is beginner friendly. If I have to have our clients do VPNs and shit, but maybe I thought about that too. All right, cool. All right. Um, okay, second follow-up question, then I'll get to my topic. Plus, you guys watching this or listening to this, you're getting value here too. What is the cheapest way to make international phone calls besides Skype? My default answer is Skype. Is there anything cheaper than Skype to make international phone calls? That's my second question. My pseudo. All right, cool. There's a service called on off. You could create a US number if I'm not mistaken. All right. WhatsApp. No, 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 no. So let me be clear. Start with this international phone call without using Wi Fi. A real phone call, not Wi Fi. You can't use WhatsApp to call your Wi Fi WhatsApp. You see my point? A real phone call using the phone network. What is the cheapest way to make an international phone call these days? I, yes, I got WhatsApp. Yes, that's WhatsApp is if you, yes, 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 I know. I'm not talking about WhatsApp. <laughs> I know you can get on Wi-Fi and the other person can get on Wi-Fi. I mean, you're going to call an American company that doesn't use WhatsApp because Americans don't use WhatsApp and you're going to call a normal landline phone. What's the cheapest way to call them? from the outside of the country. Or if you're in the United States to make an international call outside, not assuming the other person has WhatsApp. You can call any number you want. Get a friend in the USA. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You're giving me lots of answers. I will rewind the chat and I'll go through them, but uh, okay, cool. Aralo, A-I-R-A-L-O. I've heard of that. Okay, I'll look into that. All right, cool, cool, cool. Maybe you can start a business off this. Well, if you start a business off this, let me know. But that's nah, too late. My clients in several of my programs need this. They need inexpensive ways to make international phone calls and ways to get an American phone number when you're not an American and it comes up as an American phone number if you call America. And then, you know, secondarily, a Canadian phone number and maybe a UK phone number. Maybe idea. Are you shadow banned? I haven't shadow banned you. All right. Cool. Thanks for your answers. If you are watching this video, or listen to this podcast. So if you're watching the video at the recording, you can leave a comment as to your question or answer if you have one. If you're listening to this podcast, you can email me at theonlyblackdragon at gmail.com. Cool. All right. Okay. We're going to discuss today the biggest barrier to you internationalizing your life. And you will be surprised to hear that it is not residency laws, it is not that you don't have enough money. It is not that every country in the world is bad except the country you happen to have been born in, you morons. Every country is not as good as the United States. The United States is the best country in the world because I live in Florida. No, it's not that. It is, as in most things in life, right here. And if you're listening to this, I'm pointing at my own head. It's in your fucking head. I talk a lot in my other content about societal programming. And I talk about how the strongest form of societal programming of all the seven subtypes of societal programming is cultural societal programming. It is the programming from your culture. And so as an adult, you think mostly incorrectly, with rare exception, that the way you were raised in your culture is the best way. It doesn't matter if you're raised in the United States or Saudi Arabia, or India, or China, or Japan, or Australia, or Bangladesh, where you were raised, that that's the best, that your culture is the best one. And if everyone, if the whole world managed all their countries the way your country that you happen to have been statistically have been born into, then the world would be a paradise. Incorrect. So this is a strong component of your views in life and the limitations you impose upon yourself. So I am making a, I'll give you my example and I'll be more specific. In it, more, oh, sorry, I'm all over the place. Hang on, I need a drink and it's water. Hang on a second. I am, um, for you Americans, I am a technically an American still. I don't consider myself an American anymore. I haven't for several years, but technically I hold an American passport. Unfortunately, about a year and a half, a 
about a year. No. But right now I have an American passport and um, there is a way to get a massive tax deduction when you leave the collapsing USA. It's called the Foreign Earned Income Exclusion. I've done several videos on it, podcasts on it, F-E-I-E. And there's two ways to qualify for it if you're an American. One is you leave the United States and you only go back to the United States for a maximum of 35 days per calendar year. If you're out, if you only visit the United States 35 days a year, the first 120, as of this year, 124 or 26, I forget which one it is. I think it's 124,000 of your income is completely tax exempt. It's tax free, baby. You. So if you make under that, you're hundred percent tax free. Awesome. Without having to renounce your passport or anything else. Cool. The second way to qualify is called the bona fide residence test. And that is where you can prove to the, you leave the United States, you move out, you can prove to the IRS with documentation and real shit that you actually live in another country. So in my case, I can prove that I live in Dubai. I have an apartment with a year round lease in my name. I have checking accounts here. I have assets here. Not much, but I have some. I have a gym membership here. I have friends here. I have other people here, right? So I live in Dubai and I could easily prove it to anyone. I spend more than six months a year here. All that other stuff, okay? Now, however, so the advantage of doing it that way is that you can stay up to 120 days per year in the U.S. Now, the problem with that is you do pay a penalty per day you stay in the U.S. They prorate it. So I've, I've talked about how every day I spend in the U.S., I have to pay a tax penalty of $300. Because the United States is a free country. <laughs> so every time, every day I spend in the U.S., I have to pay a $300 bill for nothing. It's like Spain. It's like a $300 hotel bill, but you don't get a hotel because America sucks. So, um, however, if you get down to 35 days a year, most of that exemption or that exemption, non-exemption goes away. So, unfortunately, I have family in the U.S. I have friends in the U.S. One of my children, unfortunately, still lives in the U.S. She's working on moving. Can't wait. Uh, I have business interests in the U.S., et cetera. So unfortunately, and my wife at the moment is in the U.S. So uh, on my international lifestyle, you have to do this if you're an American, is you, what's going on with my internet connection? Hang on, I'm going to wait a second. It's blanked out twice here. Let's check my internet connection, shall we? Hang on. Connection is unstable. It's fine, StreamYard. What are you doing here? Hang on. Oh, I do see a problem. One moment. Okay, hang on. All right, there we go. It connected to my, weird, it connected to my Wi-Fi on my phone instead of the Wi-Fi in my office. Why did it do that? Weird. All right, are we good? All right, we're good. Sorry. Where the fuck was I? Oh, if you're United States and, and other Western countries, when you leave your collapsing UK, Germany, <laughs> Canada, in many series, you have to do this as well. You have to... Um. You have to make a, a record, keep a record of where you are every day of the year. So since 2021, when I finally left the collapsing USA, I now keep a record. It's everywhere, every city you sleep in. So if you stay in the Philippines for seven days, you got to put that in with dates. Then you go to like, you know, Dubai for a month and then you go to Paraguay for three months. And so I have all this track since 2021. I give the exact number of days I stayed in every country. And so that way I can also track the exact number of days in the USA because that's a number I have to pay attention to. By the way, if you do the 120-day foreign earned income exclusion, you get up to 120 days, but you can't do 120 days every year. You will be audited. You'll be in big trouble. You want it around and less than 120 days, and you want it a completely different number every year. If the IRS sees every year you're in the United States 120 days every year, your ass is going to get audited. Joe Biden's going to come down on you with his new 80,000 IRS agents. I'm sure glad make Trump. I'm, I'm sure Trump. I'm glad Trump made America great again, guys. Good job. 
So anyway, you're going to get fucked. So you want these numbers to be as low as you can and have them be random numbers. What I'm doing is I am, and I've discussed this many times, reducing the number, the amount of time per year I spend in the United States every year. So I will give you the exact number of days I spent in the USA in 2021, which is the first year I moved. I was in the USA exactly 110 days. Okay. So just under what? Four months, three and a half months, whatever, under my 120 day limit. Okay. In 2022, I was in the US 92 days. That's a big drop. Good for you, Caleb. Good job. All right. Last year, 2023. Now that that is that year is finally over. Thank God. Goodbye, 2020. Everyone hated 2020. I had a great 2020. I had a shitty 2023. Not shitty, but not as good as I'd like. 2023, 46 days in the USA. Ooh. Now it would have been about um, 30-ish, 35-ish. But I did a solid for my family, and I went back to collapsing Portland, Oregon, for a week to visit my my family and my wife and my kids for Christmas. Shit, couldn't wait to leave. Love my family, love my wife, love my daughter, love my parents. Hate Portland, hate the United States. Um, okay, so 46 days. So my objective in 2024, best year of my entire life, hopefully, I'm going to try to get that under 35. I don't know if I can pull that off. I think I can. I think so. I think so. So that means a lot of people in my personal life who want to see me, I put them on notice. If you want to see me, you're going to have to go to Mexico or Canada to see me because I ain't going to cross that border. By the way, my son, Josh, does lives this lifestyle. He lives in Mexico, spends a lot of time in Thailand, mostly in Mexico these days. He won't even go back. You know what his number of days U.S. last year? Zero. He won't even go back. He won't even go back. His mother, my ex-wife from a billion years ago when I was a young man, she says, come visit me in the U.S. He's like, no, I'm not coming to visit you. You want to visit me, you get a passport, you come see me in Mexico. And she did. <laughs> she actually, like, two years ago, this is a woman who doesn't travel anywhere, my ex-wife. And I don't talk to her, but this is from my kids. She got a passport and went and saw him for a week. Hardcore. Hardcore. So, even better. Uh, Andrew Henderson, Nomad Capitalist, he doesn't go to the United States at all. At all. Now, will I ever get my United States days to zero? I don't know because I want to do events for you guys in the USA. More information coming on that soon. So I'd like to do events there. Uh, there are business reasons that make sense where I can make a lot more money than the tax, the few, the, the thousand dollars in tax expense I would incur by being there for about a week. So, and my daughter's there, eh, you know, but the day will come where I'm going to tell my daughter, sweetheart, you want to see dad, uh, you're going to have to fly down to Guadalajara or fly up to Vancouver, BC, because I'll go to Canada. I, Canada's collapsing. Another collapsing country, but it's a nice place. Um, love Mexico. It's one of my flags. So I'll go there. But United States, nope. Unless you want to come see me during an event I'm doing or something like that. <laughs> um, okay. So here's the deal on this. As part of your cultural societal program, this is one of the reasons you're not doing this. Beyond the bullshit of if we vote for Trump, he'll fix everything. Beyond that bullshit that a lot of you are, are just addicted to, especially you Americans. But this doesn't apply just to you Americans. It mostly applies to Americans. But it also applies to many of you Canadians. It applies to many of you in the UK. Um, it applies to some of you in Germany. It applies to some of you in Australia. Uh, not as bad as America, but some. Some of you have this disease. And that is that you should not marry where you live. You need to date where you live. This is the mental shift you need to make. One of the major reasons why so many of you, especially Americans, are so angry these days is because you have married America. I need to stay here. I need to take back America. I need to fight the feminists. I need to, you know, oh, we, can't, we can't let the woke people win. That's all statements coming from an irrational psychopath who has married America. Now, if this was 1954 or 1963, marrying America would probably be a great idea. As I've discussed in my other content, there were many ideas that were great ideas a long, 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 long time ago that today are fucking stupid. You need to update your software. Going to college back in 1962 in the USA was a fantastic idea. I would have gone. You should have gone. If I had a kid back in 1962, I would say, man, you need to go to college. 
Going to college today is literally one of the stupidest, most destructive decisions you can make in your entire life, unless you're going to be a doctor. And even then, there's some caveats. So what was once a good position to have is now a stupid position to have. Right? Right. I could give you 20 of these things. In the world in which we live, where we are living in a collapsing civilization that is going to last over the next 25 to 30 years, and that's a wild guess, I could be wrong. But we have entered, I said as of 2019, we have entered in this new era, the, the era of the collapsing Western civilization and other countries outside of the West also collapsing. When you live in an era of instability, <clears throat> excuse me, what they call a VUCA world, I talk about this in my coaching in my, my, my uh, masterminds that I do. Talk about VUCA, volatile, unpredictable, V-U-C. What's C? Uh, volatile, unpredictable. You can tell I haven't done this in a while. Volatile, unpredictable. What's the C stand for? A stands for ambiguous. C, complex. Volatile, <laughs> VUCA. Volatile, unpredictable, complex, ambiguous. That's the world in which you now live in. And it's been like that for quite a while. In that world, you cannot marry any country. Any country, excluding and especially a collapsing Western country. The reason I was able to leave the United States, A, before I left the United States, the reason I was not, I was not internalizing all the problems of the United States, like most of you are, is because I wasn't married to the U.S. I was dating the U.S. She wasn't even my girlfriend. I, we were just dating. You know, there's a dating and having a wife. I talked about it on the channel. Well, Caleb, you're, you're married to Dubai now. No, I'm not. I am not married to any country. Any country. I have said many times, and I'm happy to say it again. I love Dubai. Dubai is great. As of now and as of the foreseeable future. But I promise you, if Dubai starts jacking up my taxes, I will be fucking out of here within 60 days. I will be to Paraguay or Mexico. I will be out. I will be out of Dubai within 60 days if they jack up my taxes. They can raise my taxes a little, like this 9% corporate tax. That might be okay. You can raise, I'd rather pay 9% than 50. So that's fine. But if they jack my taxes like 20, 25%, like a Western country, I'm out of here in 60 days because I'm not married to Dubai. I am dating Dubai. And boy, is, is she hot. She's hot. The girl I'm dating called Dubai is hot. Meets all my needs. Makes me very, very happy. I have another girl I'm dating. Her name is Paraguay. Love her to death, too. She's awesome. She's hot as hell. Love her, too. Am I married to her? No, I am not. If Paraguay goes down to the shitter, probably not. These are all countries of the rise. I've chosen my countries well. I choose my flags with objective, rational facts and data instead of my feelings. If Paraguay starts going down the dumps, I'm out of there too. And I'm off to Mexico. She's pretty hot. It's not as, now Mexico's not as hot to me as Paraguay or Dubai, but I'm still dating her too. <laughs> the United States is my ex, one of my exes. You know, every once in a while your ex calls you and you're like, oh no, not you. That's the United States for me. But I am not married to any country. Most of you are still married to the collapsing Western country in which you live. The mental shift you need to make is to put your hand down by your umbilical cord, because a lot of you guys still have these. See, you think, this is an old Dan Kennedy joke from years ago. You think that your umbilical cord was cut and removed when you were a baby. Oh, no, not most humans. Most humans still have an umbilical cord plugged into their countries or plugged into their culture or plugged into their religion or plugged into their girlfriend or plugged into Donald Trump or Andrew Tate. And you say, please, please tell me what to do. Please, please get better. Please, please solve my problems. What you need to do if you're married, and a lot of you fuckers are, if you're married to the United States, Canada, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, most any Western country, Israel, all of Western Europe, most of Eastern Europe, and even if you're outside the West, I'm outside the West, you need to cut the cord. You need to get a divorce from where you currently live mentally so that you're not married to the U.S. anymore. This is especially important for me to talk about. That's why I'm talking about this this year because in the United States, God help us all, there is an election this year and a significant percentage of you watching or listening to this video or podcast 
are going to get real excited again about Donald Trump, you morons. The reason you're getting excited is because you're still married to the U.S., which means you're going to go down with the U.S. If you're married to a horrible wife who beats the shit out of you and screams at you and calls you names and never has sex with you, and if you're a woman, a horrible husband who does these, th does these things, what your spouse does is what happens to you. Your spouse breaks the law. Your spouse goes into debt that's your debt motherfucker all your problems are with that spouse unless you do a certain type of marriage which i'll talk which i talk about on another channel i'm not in that category in my, in my actual personal life you get my point you get the metaphor you have to date where you live and not marry where you live then when or if you make a change where you get an international backup plan at a minimum you should do this where can you be in 72 hours by the way, you should have this already in place. I've been talking about this for over a year. You should have an international plan B where you can be in 72 hours, another country you have residency in, that you are also dating, not married, to dating. When you, Or if you move to another country, you make this transition, you don't marry that country either because I've seen that happen too. Smaller category, but I've seen some of you make this mistake. Uh, some of you are making this mistake right now. You've left the collapsing West. You're in your new country and you're like, you're in the honeymoon period of your new marriage, your new country. Oh, it's so great here. Oh, oh, it's so awesome. I love Thailand. I love Vietnam. I love Colombia. I love Paraguay or even Dubai, even my flags. That I, love. I love Armenia. Great. Okay. You don't marry that country either. I just told you I'm not married to Dubai. I'm not. That's why I've said 10,000 times, not trying to convince anyone to go to Dubai because I'm not married to Dubai. There are people here who live in Dubai who are married to Dubai. They're married. So if Dubai jacks their taxes up, they're going to stay here and just take it. I'm not, I'm out because I only date countries now. When you lived in a more stable world many, 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 many decades ago, you could marry a country and you would probably be okay. It's very analogous to actual marriage. You know, the real divorce rate, I've talked about some other content, I'm not going to detail about this. The real divorce rate back in the 1950s was like six, 7%. So therefore, getting married back then was okay, more or less. Divorce rate today? The actual divorce rate, I won't give you the number. We'll talk about that on Wednesday if you want because you will you guys will freak out about the number. It's huge. It's not 50%. It's way past that. It's the same thing now with countries. The reason I have the freedom and stability that many of you lack is because I'm not married to any country. And, uh, and here's the next thing. I never will be ever again. So in terms of your international life, you're going to be forever single. Forever single. I know it sounds sad. I know it sounds doesn't sound romantic. Forever single. Now, if you're really smart, you do something like Five Flags. We are dating multiple countries. I don't date just Dubai. I am dating Paraguay. So Dubai is my main girl, okay? Right under Dubai, my second main girl, but she's almost there, is Paraguay. My third girl is Mexico. My fourth girl is Armenia. And I have a bunch of, like, other girls on the side, like Hong Kong, the UK kind of is like a distant on the side. It's on a flag. It's a Western country it's on the side. You know, the United States, I was, I mean, I was there for 40 days, 46 days last year. I'll be there for maybe 30 days this year. So she's kind of, uh, right. But I'm not married to anybody. I never will. And that way, now I have the long-term confidence and the emotional confidence and the emotional stability to know I'm always going to be okay. I follow the sovereign CEO lifestyle. I have location independent income. I can make money anywhere in the world I want. I have permanent residency, permanent in four different countries, soon to be five. I have permanent residency in four of my flags. Um, the permanent residency for Mexico comes up next year. So in a year, I'll have permanent residency in five countries. So I am covered no matter what happens. And I know I will leave Dubai if there is a problem. Now, there may, be never, there may never be a problem in Dubai. It may never happen. I may be in Dubai the rest of my life. That would be nice. That would be my, my preference. Or at least the next 15, 20 years before maybe I change my mind or something. I decide to leave because of whatever. Okay. But I know that no matter where I am, I will always be safe and I will always be okay, irrelevant of what that country has done because I have the emotional ability to leave any country I need to. A strong percentage of you out there, I would say at least 40% of you do not have this. You're going to sit right in your horrible, bullshit, collapsing, quasi-socialist, 
quasi-authoritarian, woke, collapsing Western country, and you're going to make all the bullshit excuses you're going to make and talk about politics and Trump and whatever, or what about my cousin, and you're going to go down with the ship because you have not emotionally detached from this. And, and watch, you guys, watch what happens after, you know, June of this year when the American election president really gets into, gets into high gear. You're going to see this shit all over again. You're going to see it in my audience. Oh, Trump, we got to kick Biden's ass. You're morons. You're all morons. Let me say something about this really quick. Americans in particular again. Now, you Europeans are just as bad. And frankly, you fucking Canadians, you're all terrible at this. In terms of voting for people, you all do this. I'll use Americans as a specific example since that's my context. You Canadians are fucking horrible at this. You Europeans, especially you Western Europeans, are fucking horrible about this. You Germans are awful about this. Voting for people. You vote for people who lie to your fucking face. I've talked about in prior videos where if someone lies to me, you're out of my life. You're gone. I don't, well, at a minimum, no, you're out. If you're, if you lie to me and you're in a position of importance in my life, you're gone. Because if you lie to me once, you'll lie to me again. I can't trust anything that'll come out of your mouth ever again. No matter how much I liked you before you lied to me. You motherfuckers regularly elect people to run your companies, country, excuse me, who lie to your goddamn face. And you keep electing them over and over again. Let's go through the list just for you dumb Americans. Joe Biden, I will give everyone in America a $2,400 STEMI check. Donald Trump, I will build a big, beautiful wall on the Mexican border. Barack Obama, if you like your doctor, you can keep him. George W. Bush, combat operations in Iraq have now ended. Bill Clinton, there are no longer any Chinese nuclear missiles pointed at any American cities. George H.W. Bush, read my lips, no new taxes. You Americans are fucking morons when it comes to voting for your leaders, which means you should just stop. Stop. Go cold turkey and stop voting. Focus on your life. Stop voting and you're going to, and again, I'm going to say this again, 30, 40% of you are going to fucking do this again. Most likely, probably, I don't know, but most likely the two candidates this year for the United States will be once again, I can't believe I'm saying this, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Two of the worst people you could possibly come up with Again, two people we know for a fact didn't even fucking move the needle in terms of preventing American collapse. Not it's as possible, but they didn't do a goddamn thing. Neither one of these things, neither one of these people in their president. And you're going to fucking do it again. And you're going to get really excited when one of these people win or really fucking mad when one of these people lose because you've lost your fucking minds. You have to do whatever you can to emotionally detach and divorce yourself emotionally from America, Canada. European country, Australia. you got to do it. If you don't do that, none of my advice will ever help you. There is this, I don't like talking about this, but this is true. There is a significant percentage of people in my audience, including like hardcore people in my audience who are like on my mailing list and consume all my content and do all my, listen to all my podcasts, all my videos. They haven't made this emotional change, so they never take any of my advice because they can't. They're still holding out for, well, maybe Ron DeSantis will. Do. So step zero before you take any action is to mentally get to the point where I need to make a change. There's nothing that's going to fix America. America, the entire Western collapsing trifecta of America, Canada, and Europe, especially Western Europe. There is nothing you can do to save these countries. I've said it 10,000 times. It is mathematically impossible to turn those finances around. It is logistically and physically impossible to change the opinions of 750 million human beings in the Western world to completely change their opinions away from wokeism and all this other stuff. It's done. You have to put a stamp on it, put a fork in it. It's done. Move on. And you've got to come to this, just come to this place emotionally. You can still date America. I kind of still am. That's okay. Date where you live. Date your flags. Do not marry any country for the rest of your life. That doesn't mean you will kill, but I want to have a home that I can rely on. You can have that. Dubai is my home, and I rely on it. Paraguay is my second home, and I rely on that. You can. 
but I'm not married to these countries. I date them. You've got to make that distinction and make that difference. Or else you're fucked. <laughs> uh, I'm going high level. <laughs> I'm not concerned so with the federal candidates, only local candidates. That's a waste of time, too. Sorry. Sorry. It, the fish stinks from the top down. It's old Portuguese saying. You know, sorry. This isn't, isn't going to do it. USA is your FB at best. Right. My low-end FB. <laughs> Use Alpha Male 2.0 terms. Right. And, you know, I could... I, we'll go on to some other things tonight. or to, I say tonight. It's really today for you guys. It's late here in Dubai. Specific ways in which you could do this, but you got to do it. You've got to unplug the umbilical cord because about 40% of you, this is my rough guess, but I, I think I'm in the ballpark of being accurate on this. You still have this umbilical cord coming out of your tummy and you're a little baby and you got it plugged into something in the US or something in Canada or Europe. The politics, your mom... Uh, your girlfriend or wife, if you have one, God forbid, or if your spouse, I say if you're a woman, um, your future hopes, uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter, you're, you've, you've got it plugged into something. you got to unplug that thing and actually become a <gasps> an adult. <laughs> one of my mentors, my pri probably my primary mentor of my life, Brian Tracy, one of his primary quotes was, adulthood begins... Adulthood is not achieved by any numerical age. Most adults never achieve adulthood. Adulthood begins when you fully realize no one is coming to the rescue. He would say that over and over and over and over again, and he's fucking right. He's still alive. He's still kicking. He's an old man now, but he's still out there. That's exactly how this works. You're not an adult if you think that some something magical will happen in the United States and turn it all around, then you'll be okay. No, 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 no. You have to save you and those you have significant others, wife, kids, what have you, spouse, kids, eh, your, your inner circle of family. If you have small kids and or a spouse, not a girlfriend, not a girl you're seeing, okay? A spouse and small children. Small children meaning under the age of 18. I have kids, but they're over 18. My son's in his 30s. My daughter's in her mid-20s. I'm a very old man. I don't look old, but I am. So they, they're adults. That's their own thing. Now, thank God one of my kids has already left the United States. My daughter is working on it. It'll take her a few more years. That'll be fucking great. <laughs> when I'm reunited with my wife and when my parents love my parents, but when my parents have passed away, I'm not hoping them to die. That'll be an awful day of my day, but they're not leaving. They're going to stay there until they die, but they're in their 80s, okay? And then when my daughter moves out of the United States. Then I will have literally no family reason to ever go back to the U.S. I might still for a few days a year for business and seminars and things like that. But, you know. All right. Okay. Um, um, 90 Day Business Builder, and then we'll talk about, um, we'll get to questions of your other things. The 90 Day Business Builder is my flagship program where we show you how to build your own location independent business so you can get free and be location independent. Within 90 days, we guarantee you'll be making money within 90 days or we will work with you forever for free until you do. It is by far my most popular program by far I have ever used in my entire internet existence of selling stuff online since 2009. I've been an internet entrepreneur business owner since 2009. Long, long, long time. I want you to be free. It's part of my mission. It literally is my mission. If you schedule your phone call to sign up for the 90 Day Business Builder by tonight, midnight EST, tonight, whatever time zone it is right now, or wherever you are, $400 off. And if you can't afford the entire thing, you can make payments anywhere from four to six to 12 months with no interest and no late fees depending on which country you're from and things like that. And you can sign up now, get the discount, and you don't have to start on Saturday. We start on Saturday. Saturday, June 13th is when we start. We start on Saturday. You don't have to start on Saturday. You can wait and start next month or the month after. You're locked in the program. 
And that way you get all the materials on stuff. You get things rolling and start when you're ready. So if you want the discount, something you're going to do in the next month or two, you can sign up now. I already gave a discount, a similar discount for Black Friday briefly. I am not giving any more discounts for quite a while. This is the last one. I've done this is the second one for the New Year's. I'm selling the New Year's 2024. Get free in 2024. Uh, there will be a link in this video. I'll, I'll verbally state it for the podcast. It's store.calebjones.com slash 90DBB. I should probably have a better link. The other link isn't working because I fucked it up. Matter of fact, I'll put it in the chat. Hang on. Store.calebjones.com slash, you know what? I'm going to put it in a banner. Hang on, and we'll get to your questions. Let's put it in a banner, shall we? Do, 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 do. Hang on. Here it is. Ninety day. I capitalize correctly. Ninety day business builder flash sale. How you like that? Four hundred dollar discount if you schedule your call by tonight. Save. Uh, ticker. Hang on. Awesome. There we go. All right. <clears throat> I just came off a session. We have a guy who just got his first client. He's very super happy. We have, I'll talk about success stories in a little bit. All right. It's awesome. Okay. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Oh, I just realized we're streaming this in the wrong thing. Oops. Oh, well. Um, should we do a Q&A? Let's do some questions here. Do you guys get what I'm saying about this? I have a feeling a lot of you are in this category of you're still wedded to your, your collapsing bullshit Western country, and you're just not bringing it up because you're like, God damn it. I can't put anything in the chat or the comments because then he'll call me an a-hole. He'll call me out. You know, maybe Trump will turn it around. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe people will turn back to God. <laughs> maybe Jordan Peterson will, you know, <laughs> maybe Andrew Tate. Well, I know. I know that's a hunk of you. I wish it wasn't. It's you guys I'm talking. A lot of you already get this. A lot of you are already there. A lot of you are already living abroad. Great. Great. Good. Now, real quick before I get the questions. You guys have already made this transition. I'm going to say this a different way. You don't marry your new country either. Where can you be in 72 hours applies to even if you're already doing five flags. It applies to me. Okay? Where can I be in 72 hours? Paraguay, Armenia, Mexico. All three. In, now that means, 72-hour rule means your feet are on the ground in the new country within 72 hours. At any point, at any time, could be midnight on a Tuesday, something horrible happens in your country. It doesn't mean you get on a plane within 72 hours. No, 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 no. Your feet are on the ground in the new country within 72 hours. I, my, can, my feet can be on the ground in Armenia at any point here in Dubai within eight hours. Within 24 hours for uh, Mexico or Paraguay. Paraguay, I think, is, I've done all the math on this. I think it's uh, 32 hours at the most. My feet are on the ground in Paraguay with my permanent residency, with all my resources down there, good to go. So just because you're doing, you've moved out of the collapsing West, great, good, 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 thank God, good for you. You're smart. You're awesome. But you also can't marry where you live, which means you need a backup plan to your backup plan. I have backup plans to backup plans to backup plans to backup plans. This is why I don't worry about this shit. I don't worry about the Great Reset. I don't care about it. I don't care about Biden. I don't give a shit about that. Don't give a fuck. That's why I didn't care about COVID. You, you Americans sat there during COVID and took it. I left the country. I said, fuck this. I'm out. And I was out. Well, you guys were in lockdowns in the United States, Canada, Europe. I was here in Dubai. Everything was open, going to restaurants, seeing movies. It was great. I was at, well, you guys were wearing masks. I was in Armenia where they didn't have any mask mandates, at least most of the time. No one wearing masks was awesome because I don't marry these countries. All right. 
think you get my point. Imagine the media outrage if you ran for presidency, Caleb. I'd be killed. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be elected. And if I got elected, I'd be assassinated immediately. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Where's some questions here? Uh, uh, hang on. Is Dubai good for day gaming hotties? No. You can, but it's not. There are better places. I see Mexico is going up on their economic requirements for economic solvency. That is correct. www.caleb.top slash go. Get your Mexican residency now. Do not wait. This will get harder. Every year this gets harder. Mexico, Paraguay, Dubai, Armenia, all the flags I talk about. Uruguay's coming this year, hopefully. These are all going to get harder every year. The longer you fucking wait, the harder this gets, the more expensive it gets. That's right. So I'm going to go ahead and get the temporary residency this year. Smart. Good. Good, good, good. Mexico is great. Res Mexico is great. Residency, get a second passport, then use the second passport, get residency in other countries. Right? I've said this. I'm really tempted about this. I, am, I keep thinking about this. I got to get this out of my head. Once you get residency in, in Mexico after your first year, okay, if you go spend six months a year in Mexico for three years in a row, which is perfectly doable. It's not like spending, I'll cover that in a second. They'll give you a passport. And the Mexican passport is one of the best passports in the world. Americans don't realize that Mexico is very well respected internationally. Americans think cartels, but the rest of the world, like Mexico is awesome, with some exceptions. It's one of the best passports in the world. I'm like, God, I could do that. See, you could get a, a, a Paraguay passport if you get residency there. And you spend nine months a year three for three years in a row in Paraguay, that's harder because uh the travel down there. You're you're far away from everything, which is why Paraguay is good. If it'd be pretty rough. I don't think I could do that. But I could totally spend six months here in Mexico. No problem, dude. It'd be great. I'm tempted. Tempted. Wealthy expat has a video on this. Yeah, he does. He's a big fan of Mexico. Yeah. What do you think of Puerto Rico? I would never live there. Too many hurricanes. And the infrastructure is awful. The crime is awful. There are better places in the world. Canadian with Turkish citizenship and Philippines driver's license. <laughs> awesome. Love it. <laughs> Canadian, do you live in Canada? That's not good. I live in the U.S. and it's just lots of homeless and woke garbage. Correct. I was just there. As soon as I walked off the plane, you're homeless people. Literally right out. You walk right out of the airport, there's homeless people. Nice, that's great. What about family? I know you raised kids before leaving the U.S. Uh, give me a more specific question. I understand your question. I've addressed the issue of family many times in many videos of this channel of what to do if you have extended family, fuck them. If you have small children, you got to bring them, you know. You know. <clears throat> Once you become a Paraguay resident and cedula, you can't easily move to other Mercosur countries like Brazil and stay there infinite and stay there indefinitely. Can't you easily move? Yes, you can't stay there indefinitely. So there is some kind of limit. I've asked, I've been asked that question before. I don't know what the visa limit is on that. But you can't cross legally cross over to Brazil or other Mercosur countries that stay there forever. I don't think that is how the law works. But yeah, it's a lot easier. The beauty for those of you even considering Paraguay, www.caleb.top slash go. When you get your cedula, which is an extra step when you get residency. Okay, you, that card will give you access to most countries in South America, visa-free travel. You don't even need your passport in many cases. You just flash the card and they let you in. It's awesome. And you can stay for long periods of time. I don't know if you can stay forever. So it's it's badass, dude. Paraguay is just awesome. Wealthy expat recommended Serbia and Russia as flags. What's your perspective on this? Depends on what type of flag. That's my standard answer. Was that a good flag? There's five. I've talked about there's five, six different types of, not five, five or six different types of flags. Depends. Live full time in Russia. I mean, if you're a real traditional right wing guy, you might be happy on that. No. Serbia, mm, there are better places. I'm not a big fan of Europe, as you guys know, including Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe is collapsing because Western Europe is collapsing. Eastern Europe, people forget that Eastern Europe is in Europe. <laughs> That's why it's called Eastern Europe. Is it collapsing as badly as Western Europe? No. Will it be as painful 
Will the European class be as painful for Eastern European countries as Western European countries? No. You're living well, not as much. Hang on. On my internet. See, now it's up. Hang on. It looks fine. I'm connected to my 5G. What's going on? Weird. All right. Don't know what's going on. Um, really think it's nostalgia with people thinking and hoping America can return to the 1980s, 1990s. Dude, 1950s. I mean, yes, it's called modern day right wing conservatives. They they watch a few Jordan Peterson videos and they watch, you know, you know, Ben Shapiro, and they watch a little Andrew Tate. They go, Yeah, we can do this. Yeah. No, you're you're as I've said 10,000 times, the right already lost the culture war around 2010. That's damn near 15 years ago. Way, way too late. Um, what do you think about India? I would not use it as a flag. Is the same is it same for as someone from the USA, which is like get out of your country and things like that? No, no. You don't you, there's no urgency. Left. There's no urgency to leave India. No, no. Since you don't watch the news, how do you track the direction of your flags for signs to end the dating relationship? I have advisors, and I do pay attention to tax law changes. Paying attention to tax law is not paying attention to the news. You don't pay attention to the news to see where your country is going. You pay attention to tax law. That's what I pay attention to. Do you think Bitcoin will reach 2,000, 2,500 by April? I do not. But it'll go way up, y'all. Can you have the Dubai Corp and bank account but apply for the trade license later? No. The trade license is simpatico connected to the corp. So you have to have the trade license or else the corp, you have to have both. So the answer is new. Is Ascension about equal to third tier cities? Ascension? I mean, Ascension equal to about third tier cities such as Cincinnati or St. Louis regarding things to do. No, it's lower than those cities. Or would you have to go to places like Buenos Aires or Rio? It depends what you need. Um, I mean, I can't think of anything. If I lived in Asuncion most of the year, I can't think of anything I would need to go to other countries for outside of advanced healthcare stuff. Other than that, no. I'd have to have a lot of stuff shipped in, but they you can ship stuff in. Um, but yes, if you wanted to, you pop over to Buenos Aires or Mo even Montevideo. Buenos Aires is where you'd go. That's that's like a half an hour. No, it's like 45 minutes on the plane. So yeah, it's fine. One of my, I might talk about this on, on Wednesday. One of my, this is Sovereign CEO, so I have to use correct language. One of my friends in Paraguay over the weekend got hit by a car. And um, very sad. And uh, I mean, like, screwed up her lip. It blew out one of her teeth. She's got heart palpitations now. It's awful. Just, it's terrible. So she's getting medical care that a Paraguayan would get in Paraguay, which is okay. If you're an expat living in Paraguay, you'll get medical health care than the Paraguayans do because you're a rich, quote-unquote, Westerner. But um, sucks. So, yeah. Yes, I understand about being married to one place. I just had this conversation about people who love Colombia but get socopoline and robbed. Well, I've talked about that. Those are stupid people. You don't go to a country like Colombia and invite a hooker over to your apartment and spend the night with her. You're just an idiot. I've had numerous videos on this. I have never been anywhere in the world. I've been all over the world, including too many places that are considered extremely dangerous. I've never... Why? Because I'm not stupid. You don't go to a touristy area in a high crime rate city or region and whip out your new iPhone and say, hey, everybody, I'm a da-da-da. You're going to get a baseball bat to the head and they'll take your phone. Just don't do that and you won't have a problem. People are stupid, especially men. <clears throat> Jordan Peterson will turn America back to God. Andrew Tate will transform an army of betas into alpha males and put women back in the kitchen. Then Donald Trump will secure the border. You'll see. That's right. That's right, God damn it.
if we just, you know, band together and make a movement, we can take America back, guys. Bring back to the Lord, get back to the nuclear family, get Trump in there as president for life. Build that fucking wall. Make sure Andrew Tate never goes to jail ever again. Make Jordan Peterson a saint. We will take back our country that we lost 15 years ago. It's never coming back. I'll be investing in the Paraguay per permanent residency program this year. Cool. Any projects for Armenia plan in 2024? For me, no. Um, well, yes, actually. Actually, yes, November. November, I go for my Armenian residency. Excuse me, my Armenian citizenship, my passport. Oh, <gasps> November, November, November. Can you repeat that link or post the name in the chat? It's in the, the you, it's in the the ticker you're seeing below me. Or oh, you're talking about the the residency one. So for residency, www. Let me put it in the chat. Hang on. Residency services. That's what you're asking for. www. And you have to put www. I will fix it eventually. Caleb. Top slash go. Nice and easy to remember. Um, UK is having an election too. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Labor will win. Um, I don't know. Maybe. You might be right about this. Starting 90 in business building this Saturday. Cool. Hope that's something in place by the time that happens. Great. Now, again, I'm going to say to you UK people, even if the conservative party or, what, or you know, UKIP or whatever fucking thing you want won every election, UK is still fucked. You want to talk about Andrew Tate? He's right when he talks about the UK. It's a failed failed society. Correct. UK is fucked. And I love the UK. I'm going to be spending some time in the UK this year. I might spend a month there in the summer because I got some friends in the UK and business people up there I like to talk to and I'll do an event up there and love the UK. But I will date the UK. I will not marry the UK and I sure as fuck won't live in the UK. Are you kidding me? My God. It's surprisingly tough to stick to a routine that revolves around goals. This year, it's all about doing what I say I'm going to do to get those productive work blocks on a daily basis. Cool. I was just writing, rewriting a certain component of my new book, and I was actually talking about work blocks. So you read my mind. Cool. With Mexican residency, can't we cross the land with the residency? We can't cross on land with the residency, sorry? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So how would Paraguay track your nine months, say, to achieve a passport if you're just traveling to Mercosur in the region the whole time? You would want your, you wouldn't do that. You would want your passport stamped. So you would make sure Paraguay knew. What you're saying is, and I've heard people suggest this, don't do this, okay? But the way this works, what people have suggested, you go, Caleb, all you do, all you do is you fly into Paraguay, get your passport stamped. Then you cross over the border via land, via bus. And you go into and you go into uh, Brazil, and then they don't know. And then you come back after nine months. And then you, f and you go all the way back there and fly out. Don't risk that shit. The last thing you want to do, and this is where I agree 100% with Andrew Henderson, the last thing you want to do is get a passport and you got it through breaking a bunch of rules because what could possibly happen, and I've seen this happen, they go back and find you lied and then they revoke your passport. Don't want to do that. So don't fuck around. What do you think of Croatia? I think it's pretty cool. I've never been there. I've not been there, but that's on my list. You never mentioned Turkey. What's your thoughts? I have very little data on Turkey. I'm going to try to go to Istanbul there this year. I'm going to try. It's been on my list for a long time. I just, that's a blind spot. I've not paid a lot of attention to Turkey. Just, that's the big wide world. I, don't, I only have a certain amount of time. So I have no strong opinions pro or con Turkey, but I would love to go to Istanbul this year. Love to go. What other Dubai corporate residency maintenance fees are there besides a trade license? That's it. Can you open a US, USD or Canadian dollar account in Dubai Bank? Yes, I have many. That's easy. That's it. That's easy. No problem. You can, yes, you can do Canadian dollar. I don't know. I would imagine the answer is yes. Almost pause the answer is yes. USD, absolutely. I've got a USD to buy account. 
one of the Biden buybacks here. Do you think there's a chance the U.S. will attack Mexico if Trump becomes president? No. Republicans have been talking about attacking, attacking Mexico to go after their cartels. Yes, but they've been talking about bombing Iran for 20 years. Have they done it? No. So no, not going to happen. How would you go about convincing your family that if the U.S. is collapsing, if they are completely oblivious to it? I've done entire videos on this, entire podcasts on this. You should go back and watch those. The summary is you do your best, one conversation. If they're stubborn assholes, then you leave them to their fate. Here's the analogy I've used on those videos. Your dad and you are standing in a burning house. The house is burning down. It's burning down. You're going to fucking die. And you say, come on, dad. We need to leave the house. We're going to fucking die. And your dad says, no, we won't. Shut up. Fuck you. We're not going to die. Leave me alone. Dad, you're going to fucking die. Fuck you. Now, let's assume for a minute you can't beat up your dad. He's physically stronger than you. So what are your options? You have two options at that point. You can stand there and say, well, I love my dad, so I'm not going anywhere. And you can die. Die for your dad because you're a dumb fuck. Your asshole dad. Your asshole, psychotic, dumbass dad. You can die for your dad. Or you can say, all right, fine. And you can leave the house and your dad dies, which is his choice. And you feel bad, but you survive and you live and you live a great life. I know which option I choose. So it's not even a choice. Well, what if my family won't be, they won't leave with me? Then they won't. They're adults. So you're going to stay there and go down the ship with them because your mom's a bitch. Your dad's a stubborn asshole. Your brother's a prick. Right? And, and a lot of you have asshole dads and bitch moms and prick brothers and bitch sisters. Don't you? Don't you? Yeah. That's the answer. That's the, go watch those videos. Talk about that in detail. My, what about my family is never an excuse unless, and I've said this, the only valid excuse to not leave your collapsing Western country is you have a small child, not a 24 year old kid. You have a small child and you are not with baby mama anymore and you can't convince baby mama and you don't want to leave your child. That's the only valid excuse to not leave. And even then you could travel a lot and set up your plan B's and get ready. Even then there are things you can do. But that's the only valid excuse for I have to stay in the collapsing USA, cuckoo Canada, or suicidal Europe. If you have a small kid and you can't convince baby mama to come with you. All right. The vast, 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 vast majority of you don't have that. You don't have that excuse. Sorry. Uh, people have been dropped. I don't know how to say it. From online dating in Colombia, not hookers. Do you think that would happen to me if I did online dating in Colombia? Do you think any woman would give me the opportunity to drop something in my drink if I was dating in Colombia? No, because I'm not stupid. I keep, I have been out. I've talked about this on my other channel. I have been on first dates with women, the really pretty ones who will do, and these people are stupid because it's a 2% rule thing, but they will do a thing where they will tell me later on our first date, I made sure that you went to the bathroom. And I didn't leave, and I had I held it because I don't want to leave my drink. I'm gonna watch my drink at all times because you might roofie my drink or drink. Men roofie women, same thing. Men are stupid, and some women. Usually, it's guys. When guys travel, they're fucking stupid, and they get in all kinds of trouble. And I've never had to explain me. I've never had a problem, including I've dated women abroad in countries that people consider dangerous. I've never had a problem because I'm not stupid. I pay attention. I do my research and I'm not stupid. It's not that hard. I had a small medical issue in Paraguay and the service was cheap and great for all the meds and ER. I paid like 60 bucks. I know it's awesome. It's so fucking cheap there. It's great. I might help my friend with her tooth because it'll be like, it might cost me 90 bucks or hundred bucks to get her new tooth, which in Paraguay is a lot of money. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. Which free zones do you recommend besides Silicon Oasis for digital service business? There's like seven or eight of them I recommend, and I don't want to give them over public here. What about a private mortgage company? Don't have an answer for that. But Silicon Oasis is good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great. How often do you review your five-year goals? Every week. Let's say the USA disappears. Well, it won't disappear, but it will collapse in your lifetime. 
Can you easily make a business in a flag catering to locals and just stay and stay just as flexible? I don't understand the question. Can you easily make a business in a flag catering to locals in the United States and stay? I don't understand the question. Aren't you afraid of the passport bros? No, I'm not. Ruining Mexico and Paraguay. No, none of them are in Paraguay. No one goes to Paraguay. That's why Paraguay is awesome. There's some in Mexico, yeah. Ruining Mexico and Paraguay in terms of getting residency and also packing up, picking up women. No, the passport bros are starting to find out more about South America. No, and if you're worried about them, you need to get off the internet and do a 30-day internet diet because that's just insanity. No. Do you have any idea how big Mexico is? Many people, millions upon millions upon millions of people live in Mexico. It's, it's a tiny fraction of the, if every passport bro on earth went to Mexico, it'd be a teeny tiny fraction of those women. You're afraid of something that is statistically impossible, which means you're consuming too much internet content. As I talked about about two live streams ago. Is it easy to get prescription meds in Central South American countries? Yes, relatively. Mm -hmm. I was in Russia last year, very nice lifestyle flag because of sanctions. It became, but because of sanctions, it became a pain in the ass to work internationally or do business with the West. Right. That's it. You better, you, you better, you live in Russia, which is fine. They have a lot of good VPNs, a lot of good VPNs. You'll be Mr. VPN <laughs> and your American phone number, all that shit. <laughs> Could work for an Asian Middle East business. Someone in my audience has approached me to do a uh, joint venture to do a service that we would offer that would give you a corporation and or a checking account in Hong Kong. And I'm tempted to, to do it. Uh, the problem is it's a little pricey because it's Hong Kong. Hong Kong ain't cheap. So I'm tempted to do that. We'll see. What's a physical presence needed for Mexico? For residency, zero. For the, for well, you got to renew it once a year for the first one or two years, and then after that, you don't have to go back at all unless you want to renew it. And then once you renew it after three years, it's zero. Mexico has one of the few real permanent residencies. I'm going to get mine next year. Is it next year? Let me think a minute. Yeah, next year I get my real. See, most countries I've done videos on this. When they say permanent residency, it's not permanent. You got to renew it in five years or six years or eight years. It's not, it's not permanent. Mexico is fucking permanent. It's permanent, but you got to go through that three-year process. Getting a job online is my biggest problem. We'll start setting up mass applications soon. Don't get a job. Start your business. Stop getting a job. Stop trying to get a job. Stop trying to get a job. Get your own business going. Don't have a job. Job's stupid. Mark Zuckerberg is building a bunker. Looks like something crazy is going to is going to happen this year. No, it will not. Are you the same guy who asked about? I'm going to scroll. You're the same guy. Okay. I'm not going to say your name because I want to embarrass you. You need to stop watching. Get off the internet for a week. You're, you're, you're acting insane. Nothing's going to happen this year. Let's see. I lost my place. Fuck. <laughs> Turkey is really cool. It's a tame Muslim world, but I haven't been since 2012. Then you don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. Country's changed, dude. 2012, Portland was a paradise. Go there now. 2012, you want to know what Dubai was like in 2012? Not good. When I left to move to Dubai, all these idiots in my audience said, oh, Dubai, but these things happen. And they're all stuff from articles written in 2012, 2010. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't live there in 2012. So you don't know if it's cool. I have um, a friend who lives here in Dubai and went with some of her girlfriends to Istanbul for a week. I said, oh, was it cool? She's like, no, I hated it. We all hated it. We hated it. You can't get a taxi driver, and people were assholes, and this problem and that problem. I said, oh, that sucks. I'm not saying I will hate it. I'll, I'll, I'll probably love it. But I'm just saying. What are trustworthy countries to bank in other than the United States? Uh, number one top list would be Singapore. Number two would be Dubai. Um, Hong Kong is okay. There's a bunch. Technically, Switzerland would be okay, but I wouldn't do it. I make good money and can live anywhere, but I take some medications. So do I. I'm nervous about not being able to get into another get in another country. Here's what I do. I am on testosterone replacement therapy. I do testosterone injections several times a week, plus gonadarellin slash HCG, plus I take vitamin B shots. They are prescription, and I can only get them realistically in the United States. And as you may be aware, 
uh, it is difficult, quasi-illegal, and usually not allowed to ship prescription drugs across national borders, with some exceptions. So if you live in Mexico or Dubai or Paraguay, you can't ship pharmaceuticals, prescription pharmaceuticals, from the United States to, they'll block them at, believe me, I've went through this, they'll block them at the fucking uh, airport. What you can do is you can bring them on the plane with you. Does it make sense? No, it doesn't make any sense. But they, you can bring all the shit you want on the plane with you, fine. But if you ship it, no. So what I do is I go to the United States once every six months and I get six months of stuff. And I coordinate. So when I was in the United States in December, last week of December for Christmas last New Year's, early in December, I called up my doctor and said, hey, going to be in the United States in this dates. I need this, 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 and this. Ship it to, I have an address in the United States I ship to. Okay. Um, Pink Firefly was there. She grabbed him for me. Actually, my brother, my grandpa grabbed him for me. And then I arrived, grabbed my box of stuff, left, and now I'm going to go for the next six months. And in six months, I'll have to go back. I'll, I need to go back anyway. So I just time it accordingly. And or if you have friends or family, so next time I'll probably have my wife bring them back with her in a few months. Okay. So that's what you do. Not a big deal. You just figure it out. You take a deep breath and figure it out. Make it work. And I'll do that the rest of my life. And that's fine. I make good money and can live anywhere. Oh. How do you get around Singapore vaults as only accepting medals from corporate clients as an individual? You don't use that vault. <laughs> there are other vaults that will take you as an individual. Trust me. <laughs> What's your opinion on cold contacting prospects by showing them ways to improve their website copy for free in order. Let me start lower. What's your opinion on cold costing, cold contacting prospects by showing them ways to improve their website copy for free in order to pitch your consulting service? What's my opinion on it? Uh, sounds great. Sounds great. You got to make sure you're fucking niched and you have to make sure that your offer is more specific than improving their website copy. I can increase your opt-in rates by blank. I can increase your conversions by X. You in this very narrow niche. It's great. Uh, someone's asking wife. Yes, I am married. Pink Firefly. Go to my other channel. She's been on many videos on that channel. <clears throat> it's my version of marriage. Not a traditional marriage. Can't talk about it. Look at the other channel. <clears throat> I noticed the Alpha 2.0 stream has more viewers than Sovereign CEO. Why is that? Because it's a bigger brand and this was an error. We were, we were supposed to keep them on this site only so we fucked up that story reminds me of ad astra and brad pitt he had to let his dad go at the end and his dad perished on Netflix. i never saw that movie i heard it was very boring look if your family are stubborn a-holes your job is to give them the information and your job is over you can't force people to change their minds boy would i know that i'm discussing hugely controversial topics i can't force you to change your mind all I can do is provide you the data, the objective reality, and you make up your own mind. If you want to be a stubborn asshole and say, well, if we vote for Trump and we can turn America around, okay, have fun. Have fun going down America when it collapses in your lifetime. And I may love you, but I'm not going to die for you. Sorry. <clears throat> Let's see. Someone's asking, some of you are asking dating questions. I don't answer those. Did your daughter decide independently of the U.S. or by listening to your stuff? Independently. My daughter does not listen to my stuff. Are you kidding? You guys with kids know this. Your kids don't give a fuck what you do. They don't give a shit. Do you, did you give a shit what your dad did? Especially if you're a girl. You think my daughter gives a fuck about anyone? No. She came up on her own because uh, she sees how expensive everything in the United States is. And she can go to even in a place like Sicily. She's thinking about Sicily, how much cheaper the entire planet Earth is besides the United States. That's her motivation because she's a Gen Z. She wants things cheap. So she doesn't want to make, have to make a lot of money and work too hard because it's Gen Z. <laughs> Does she know where she wants to go? She is thinking about Sicily. She's also considered Thailand. Um, she's talked to her brother and myself about Mexico. She likes cold climates. So she's like, where's a cold place that's really cheap? Like, well, most cold places are expensive. Scandinavia is fucking expensive as fuck. Uh, I don't think she'd like Russia. So I don't know. How much more would it be to add kids to a Mexican or Paraguay residency program? My son is nine, and I want to give him options as well. Schedule, go to 
www.caleb.net and we can give you all those prices. Really? Yeah, it's a real kid. Hang on. My internet's being weird again. I don't know what's going on with my signal today. You can add kids, you can add spouses, you can add, I think you add girlfriends and you get discounts. And the younger the kids are, the easier it is, the cheaper it is. So, but schedule a call. I don't want to give you data here. I don't have the prices in front of me here. Let me double check my connection here. We are still good. Okay. You know, hang on. I'm going to double check. I didn't fuck this up. Yeah, my my online backup is paused. I don't know what's going on with my signal. It's really weird. How is consulting business in Dubai? It's fucking great. Are you kidding? Do you think being a location benefit consultant and selling to companies there could work? Oh, I know it works. Fucking great. It's a booming, booming, booming economy full of super rich people. You think consulting would be a good thing to do in Dubai? Uh, yeah. Could you live stream about the druggings in Colombia? No, I would not. You could react to what's going on and give advice what's going on. I mean, I could, I could address it. I'm not going to do a live stream about it. It's one country. No. What data do you have to suggest the U.S. is going to collapse? If you look at the economic data... I have several videos on this and a lot of stuff on my blogs. You can go look. If you look at the fiscal data, if you look at where the government is going, if you look at government growth, all that stuff, America is not going to survive. The United States spent $16 trillion on COVID and got nothing for it. And that's when it was already collapsing. It spent $12 trillion on the war in Iraq. All it can do is print money. You look at inflation, you look at all the data points. I have been promising, and I will get to it probably in a few weeks, a video where I take all the statistics I have for all my sources and put them into one nice neat little video. And then whenever someone asks me, I can send them a link to that video. That video is coming. I meant that I feel like an A2 business strategy is continuing on the USA customers and the dollar strength. Incorrect. Totally incorrect. It has nothing to do with the dollar. Once the USA collapses, how will you continue to maintain a location independent business? I will do it in non, I won't do it in dollars. I'll do it in, Durham's or Remimbi, or I'll do it in some of the currency. Whatever the dominant currency is at the time, I will continue on. That's how. As I've said many times, if the United States collapsed tomorrow morning, people in Paraguay wouldn't even notice it happened. Canada would be in big fucking trouble. Paraguay wouldn't even notice. They wouldn't even notice. They'd hear about it on the news and go, oh, that sucks. And they would just go on with their lives and nothing would change. For example, there are a few passports that go to Paraguay and they leave. Two or three? Oh, no. And I saw, I was, I, one I saw saying Ascension was boring. Yes, it is. That's, again, the beauty of it. And the women were playing hard to get with him. Never had those issues there. Yeah, Ascension is super boring. Will the Unchained Man Society come back? Never. I have some ideas, but probably never. What are your thoughts about Indonesia? Could it be a viable flag for Westerners? What kind of flag? Bali is pretty good if you stay in Bali in that zone. Could you maintain tax residency in Paraguay but live in Brazil most of the time? Of course. Oh, tax residency? Uh, the answer is it depends. Wait, you don't like... Why don't you like... Wait, why don't you like Singapore again? Weather? Yes, the weather. That's the only reason I don't like it. It's scorching hot and scorching humid 12 months out of the year. I can't do it. I can't be sweaty every day the rest of my life. I'm not going to do that. Have you been to Uruguay? Oh, fuck yeah. Many times Uruguay is awesome. We're going to add that as our fifth country, hopefully this year, and teach people, have people get residency there. Yes. Thank you for the information. Very welcome. <clears throat> do you know if I if you can get level two medications in a six-month supply? I don't know what level two means, but I can get a six-month supply of just anything I need. I've never had a problem. I don't know what level two means. Uh, how are we doing on time here? All right, a few more questions, and I have to go. 90-day business builder. I'll state it if you're listening to the podcast, store.calebjones.com slash 90DBB. If you sign up by tonight, $400 off. You can start later if you want. You don't have to start this Saturday if you don't want to and still get the discount. You can make payments, in some cases up to 12 months. No interest and no late fees. 
By the way, if you're interested in residency, we offer residency in the United Arab Emirates, which is Dubai, Paraguay, Mexico, and Armenia. And on those, you can also make payments up to 12 months, no interest, no late fees. And I, Sovereign CEO, is the only company in the entire world that will allow you to make payments to get a residency in a country. There is no other country, excuse me, company in the world that will take payments. Every other company you could hire, A, is going to be way more expensive than us. They're going to be $75,000 or more instead of, you know, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. And B, we will give you payments and they will not. They require payment up front and all that shit. So there you go. Your medical thing about the USA is an example of one of the things that gives me pause. They will start making things like that more difficult when they decline. Right, that is correct. So when they decline, there will be other options. There are other ways of me getting those pharmaceuticals besides the United States. They're just a pain in my ass and I don't want to do them. But I could. There are the various labs that I could get those things from that are certified, but it's a pain in my ass. So if suddenly tomorrow morning I couldn't get those pharmaceuticals anymore, there will be other places I could get them. And here's what's going to happen. When America collapses, I've said this many times, other companies slash countries will rise the occasion and provide the services that America was providing. There might be a delay, but it'll happen. Otherwise, stay in the collapsing United States for the rest of your life and go down with the ship. Have fun. How can I stop being holistic? That's a little too off topic. Uh... The only other reason places seem cheaper is because the dollar is okay. False. That is completely incorrect. You're completely wrong. You need to do a lot more research on this. That is not correct at all. You can use your free zone corporation as a holding company to not pay capital gains on investments. Yes, but it depends on the investments. But the answer is yes, people do do that. Um, but they're tr that's tricky. Matter of fact, you're not even allowed to have the word holding in the name of the company. But people do do that and is, le is legal, but it's tricky. And I would be able to advise you on that. Sign up for our program and we'll give you our, our experts so they can help you with that. That's a tricky one, but you can. Uh, let's see here. What's your opinion of the International Living Magazine? Never heard of it. Does Pink Firefly pay U.S. taxes? Yes. Which country is the best for having the following? Hot climate I hate these. I hate these. You're going to give me a whole bunch of positives. I'm going to say there's no perfect country. Let's see if I'm right. Hot, mild climate all year, higher altitude for better metabolism, low taxes, good security, and friendly leg legislation towards men. None. <laughs> the closest thing you could come to is, oh, low taxes. No, it's Colombia, but that's not low taxes. There's no such thing as a perfect country. Thoughts on Morocco as a, as a res, on residency and tax flag. I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it, but there are better places. Unless you have compelling reasons. If you have family there or you have business interests there, you speak the language, what have you, then maybe. It's not horrible. What online pharmacy do you recommend in the USA? I cannot discuss that publicly. <clears throat> So you have to be in the country for exactly 10 days for the residency program. Which residency depends. Any thoughts on Panama? Panama is a decent flag. It's not as good as it used to be. It is not a good residency flag anymore at all. It is a decent living flag. It's decent. It's not as good as it used to be, though. I closed one time with a prospect, but it hasn't gotten back to me yet. She responds. Every, okay, you're asking a dating question and cancel dating questions. Perfect country equals Caleb land. If you go back to my old blogs, I have an entire 10 part series on if I started my own country, exactly how I'd run it. 10 part series. I call it Ascendia, small libertarian country. I went through detail, the constitution, the welfare policy, the tax policy, the fiscal policy, how it managed elections. It wouldn't be how it managed the military. I go through the whole thing, economics, how it structured the cities. It would kick ass. Never going to happen, but when is your next Alpha 2.0 live stream? Every Alpha Male 2.0 live stream is always every Wednesday. 
Wednesday at 11 a.m. EST. Hang on a moment. Am I back? I'm back. What country do you think will leave people alone the most? There is no one country. There are several countries. Uh, Mexico is pretty good about pretty good about leaving people alone. A lot of South American countries tend to be the best in terms of leaving people the fuck alone. Uh, there are some other countries, but South America is your best bet for that kind of thing. I mean, as the I mean, as the least unfree to the individual. South America, yeah, they don't give a fuck what you do. They don't have the resources to to police your ass. So they, you know, now the smaller South American countries, not Brazil. Nope. Argentina, not really. But the other South American countries, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of Belize as a flag? What kind of flag? Belize is okay. Belize is all right. There are better places. Belize is okay. I will do one more question. And then I got, I will. If you guys are interested in Alpha Male 2.0, you can hand me on Wednesday at 11 a.m. EST over there. Should I keep my United States citizenship? No. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you make less than 120000 a year and you never make on plan on making much more than that, and it doesn't really matter, you might as well keep it. i probably still get rid of it, but that's just my opinion. If you make more than 120000 a year, I make many, many, many multiples of that. Fucking get rid of it as fast as you possibly can because you pay taxes. I still pay American taxes. Not much, but I pay them and I'm required to pay them. I'm required to, to pay an accountant to do my taxes over there and file its fucking tax return even though I don't fucking live there because America sucks. It's the only country in the world besides Eritrea, no one cares about, that actually mandates you pay taxes even though you don't fucking live there because America is authoritarian. So no, get rid of it. Depends on what you make. What do you think of Vanuatu? Not good to start a business there because now companies and banks don't like when they see the Vanuatu. They go, oh, no. If you want to live there, fine. Man, it feels so crazy to give up when people die for it. I know, I know. What is talking? Your emotions. You're not operating objectively. You're operating irrationally. It feels like, are you a refugee from Africa? That's who would die for it. Is that you? Are you a refugee from Africa who can't speak English and you make a dollar a day? Is that you? You're being irrational. All right. Last question. Do you think income taxes are fair? No. Income taxes are anti-human, anti-freedom. You do not tax what you want more of as a country. You tax things you don't like. So if you hate cigarettes, you tax cigarettes. If you tax income, oh, yeah, you know. You cannot have income tax and say you live in a free country. No, I'm 100% opposed to any form of income tax. Sales tax is okay. That's okay. Tariffs, if you're careful, are okay. Some taxes are okay. Income tax, absolutely fucking not. No. And will you evade taxes if you could get away with it? No, I do not break the law. It's part of my code. Read, go look at my Alpha Male 2.0 stuff. The Alpha Male 2.0, this is Sovereign CEO, Alpha Male 2.0, you do not break the law. Because if you get caught, then you go to jail, then you have no freedom. So I do not break the law. Moreover, I'm a public figure. So I really can't break the law. I wouldn't recommend you break the law either. All right. Um, I'm out of here. I will see you guys, Sovereign CEO, next Monday. I will see you guys at Alpha Male 2. Put all those who are interested on uh, this Wednesday. 90-Day Business Builder, you have until tonight to get that discount. It ends tonight. Tonight, Monday. Monday, what is the date today? I'll go. January. Shit, I can't see it. Fuck, I'm so blind. January, God damn, it went away. January 8th. I knew that. Monday, January 8th. Cool? Cool. All right, guys. Have fun. Wait.